And what we can see here is that this game, particularly that we're going to analyze, uh, if we talk about the intensity, so meters per minute, we can see that it's 68.38. And that is what most teams will use as a reference point, okay? Now, in my opinion, this, this is not enough, and it's not an enough depth of analysis. So now when we have the same game and we divide it into the first and second half, what we see is a completely different situation. So now the most intense part, sorry, is 71.51 meters per minute. So instantly we're looking at, all right, it was actually more intense than what we thought. However, when we now separate that, that game into five minute periods, we can now see that it's completely different. And the worst five minute period of that game was at 83.86 meters per minute. So when we start comparing with the first and second half, we already see that there's a major difference. So main question, is this relevant? Why do we even bother? Um, if we look at the game average just by itself, it's 68, then 71, and then 83. So from my point of view, it is relevant, it is important, because we can see a linear increase in the way that we would be acknowledging match intensity. So if we're talking about, for example, bringing a player back from injury, and we have to prepare him for match demands, match demands is actually 83.86, because that's what they will be exposed to. Now, what do we do with this? Very nice, but we have to have some practical element. So we can create an average set of the worst five minute period, which is the green line, and now we can actually now understand what is real match demands, so the worst case scenario. We can plan an overload. And at the same time, the software allows us to select each drill based on the historical data for each specific part. So we can now progress the athlete into what is real match demands. Now, the way we do this is by a feature called Session Planner. So basically, we, we make decisions based on the historical data from each specific player. So let's say that, uh, who's the, the guy that always makes a decision? It's the coach. So let's say that we can, we can combine the objectives from the coach and the physical area. So let's say that this is a rehab week, number four, return to training, and we have the technical tactical element, which is small-sided games, okay? Uh, and what we want from a medical or, or physical area is that the objectives are kept in this square. How, many, how much time do we have? 10 meters. Oh, great. So the same in terms of volume, we need to keep them below 1,000 meters. And in terms of high intensity distance, below 50. What we can do is select each drill that has been tagged as small sided game and ask the software which will allow us to create those, those metrics. So here we have two different sets of drill, one that will allow us to reach those goals with five minute inclusion or with 10 minutes. So then it's just a matter of making the decision based on time. Now, what I've seen is that these great clubs have a specific way of analyzing injuries. This is quite, quite interesting. So they follow these three questions. So what happened, when happened, and why did it happen? And the way they answer this is using some sort of periodization model in which they look at the micro, meso, and macro analysis of the injury. So in terms of micro analysis, uh, we can see what happened when he was in the game, when he got the injury. And this time it was a game, a minute 50 to 55, hamstring strain. We know by, 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 by literature enough that over six, almost 60% of injuries happen during game. Now, when we look at the meso analysis, so the week before, what we're seeing here is the specific metrics. So uh, in, in orange, the high intensity running distance, and in blue, the average distance, so general. Uh, and that is the deviation from his average of this athlete, okay? So that's in percentage. And we can see that in match day minus two, this guy had a 400 overload, 400% overload in high intensity running distance, and a 200% overload in average distance. So I'm not saying that this is exactly the reason why he got injured. I'm just saying that this allows for a transparency to happen. So we can see actually what this happened, what, what happened with this athlete in, in, in particular. Now we look at the macro analysis. We look at uh, at least two, two months. And we can see uh, the Q to chronic ratio of this athlete. So again, hamstring strain. And we can see this specific pattern that, 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 that occurred before the injury. Now, if we, we know that basically every athlete is going to sustain an injury at some point in his career. So it's not about preventing the inevitable. It's about learning from history, learning from what, what has happened. So if we now have the historical data, 
and we know what's the, what's the sort of pattern that followed before the injury, we can now recommend the progressive increase in load when we start looking at the same pattern. And that is what we call basically building physical resilience. Now, when we talk about movement quality, it's very important and it's very difficult and tricky topic. Now, we've tried to, to, to provide a solution for that with something that we call fingerprint drill. So fingerprint drill can be anything uh, that is con consistent. So in this case, it would be two laps around the field at a constant speed and repeat it at least once a week. And what you're seeing here is the load, so player load, they're um, differentiated from the three axes. So the frontal load, the medilateral, and the vertical load. And this is what we call the fingerprint. So on the first four weeks, below each column is a different week, what is what we see with the healthy athlete. And we develop that, understanding that this will be the fingerprint of how he accumulates load. So what we've seen is that whenever we have an injury, we can, that follows a stressful period. And we can detect this anomaly in the way they accumulate load. So in order to progress him into health again, we will try to get not only to quantitative data, but also the quality of the movement. So trying to get him back to normal values and consolidate that, that, that situation. Now, getting to the last part of the presentation. After 16 years of research, uh, involving elite football and injuries, we can derive three conclusions. One is that there's a 13% of squad unavailability. So basically 13 days lost per player, per team. We can expect 50 injuries per season. So for a 25 player squad, we can expect two per player per season. And out of those, tight thighs, 10 thighs, uh, thigh strains per season. And this is important because their mean return to play time is around 18 days, obviously depending on severity and type of injury. But when we talk about re-injuries, it's a 30% increase in the time that he's going to be away from the field. And that's a major thing. Now, why is athlete availability key? It's because it has a direct correlation with performance. So in the season of 2015-16 of the UEFA Champions League, we can see that the 10 teams that were above 90% were actually the top 10 teams of the, of the championship. So it's, it's a pretty interesting correlation. Now the last two points are, in my opinion, the most important ones. First of all, is about enhancing communication and innovation. So I'm gonna show you two examples. Uh, the first one is Anderlecht in Belgium. This is a club that, in, it's, it's the best club in Belgium. They just won the league. And they decided to invest over 150 units with us, not because they needed to, not because they're in the bottom, the bottom of the league, it's because they recognize that they want to create sustainability of processes. And we're now working uh, in conjunction in a, in a form of consultancy-based um, approach. And we're trying to integrate this throughout the academy and make that to be the core uh, element around which the athlete progression goes into. And the second one is uh, the English Cricket Board. We, in conjunction with them, created uh, this performance technology partnership. We won an award last month. Uh, a BT Sports Industry Award, so we're pretty happy about that. Basically, we derived sports-specific algorithms with them in order to enhance performance. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting topic as well. And the last point, which is the most important one, is developing a club culture. So club culture is a very strange and broad term, and I, and I don't want to be fluffy about this, but there are two main things that I would able to summarize developing a club culture. The first one is having a clear and consistent values and philosophies from the academy to the first team. So it has to be something that progresses into the first team. And the second one is that these clubs develop a club culture by showing a genuine interest on in the holistic development of the athlete. So not just the football player, but the whole human. Thank you very much. Great question. Great question. So all of this is not actually um, derived from research or literature. This is a case study from one of our clients that have been using that consistently. And their, um, their preseason lasted four weeks. 
So that's what they used as a fingerprint those four weeks because that's when uh, they're not in competition, the athlete was healthy, and that's what they use. But if you have, let's say, two weeks or whatever, I think that it could be, it could be adjustable. The, the most important thing is, is consistency. So if you're able to maintain those, those practices throughout the years and that it becomes your fingerprint drill, that's, that's enough from my point of view. Yeah, so that's a great question. Again, uh, we, we differentiate those kind of examples. So the fingerprint drill, from my point of view, and this is what we've been developing with something called uh, the movement suite. So it's more about qualitative data. And we advise that is running based, because when you're running based, specific from a running based sports like football or rugby, you're able to determine what is the vertical, what, what should be the vertical, medial, and frontal load. What you're talking about is what we call um, a set drill or a club drill, which is really good for enhancing communication with, between the coaching staff. It, again, it works the same way, but we, we look at it as a different type of fingerprint drill, but exactly the same, yeah. Okay, thank you Okay, very much. thank you.